Kana. And in today's video, we are going to be discussing how you can maintain vibrational integrity in the face of energetic interference. But before we do that, I just wanted to say a very special thank you to Samantha, who is one of my subscribers for making me this beautiful necklace and these earrings. I don't know if you guys can see this, but they have a little lovely little hearts on them. So yeah, so thank you so much, um, Samantha. And thank you to everyone else who has sent me gifts and kind words. I really appreciate it. So to jump into the topic of the video today, I want to begin by explaining why I'm making this video about maintaining vibrational integrity and what I mean by vibrational integrity and energetic interference. So what I mean by vibrational integrity is I mean the ability for us to stay in alignment with the true vibration of our soul or our higher self. So we all have a true vibration. For most of us, that vibration vibration is really akin to a pure vibration of love or a pure vibration of joy. And in this world, there's a lot of things that can interfere with our ability to maintain that vibration. And sometimes we we blame ourselves for a lower vibration, and sometimes that's true. It, it may have to do with the thoughts that are in our head or things like that, right? But there have been recently, I have really felt a lot more of outside influences that may be interfering with our energetic systems. Now, I don't wanna to talk too much about the specifics of who or what is behind this energetic interference because truly it doesn't matter. Um, and because also I don't want to, um, to propagate any propaganda of fear. You know, of course there are some playful entities and organizations that like to, to, to test, you know, how different things might influence our, our um, energetic vibration. And really it's just an opportunity for us to show how good we are at staying in a clear vibration and in a space of joy. But let me just say that here in this eclipse corridor, I've just noticed a lot more, a lot more energetic interference. And I believe that we are at a very, 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 very important time in Earth's history where a lot of the old fear-based uh, programs and vibrations are burning off. And we have the opportunity, should we keep the vibration of the planet at a certain level. We have an opportunity to usher in a higher vibrational reality, and that depends on many of us staying in a space of vibrational integrity. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about five dimensions of vibrational integrity, and I'm going to offer some advice for everyone about how to, to stay in your natural vibration, even if you might be facing um, interference from any number of me. Okay, and I think this is really important, especially as we approach this eclipse, which is on Monday, August 21st. Okay, so especially, especially during this time. Now, some of what I'm going to say, it might sound a little intense, and you might think, I don't know if I can really live this way, but I promise you that you can. I do, many other healers do, many other psychics do. And please feel free to take as much of this advice as you want, or you know, to even just incorporate a little bit of it, however much you do will help. Okay, so in today's video, like I said, I'm going to be talking about five components of vibrational integrity. So I'm going to be talking about how you can uh, maintain vibrational integrity at the level of the soul and the aura, at the level of the mind, um, also how you can uh, minimize electronic interference and maintain electronic vibrational integrity, also how you can maintain vibrational integrity at the level of the body and at the level of the emotions. So let us jump in and get started. Ultimately, our aura, our energy field that surrounds our body is what emits most of our soul level energy in the third dimension. So we want to make our auras as strong and as giant as possible. And ideally, we want to fill them with the highest light frequency available to us and the most love and joy that is available to us because our aura does 
have a scientifically proven and measured impact on the matter that surrounds us. So we really want to make sure that our aura is very, very strong. And it's often when our auric field gets weakened that we tend to experience energetic interference. Here are two ways that you could keep your aura really strong. Um, the first that I recommend, especially this weekend and in this eclipse corridor, is to do one major cleansing of your aura every single day. What I recommend as being the most powerful form of cleansing for your aura is to take a salt bath, um, an Epsom salt bath or a Himalayan sea salt bath or something like that and set the intention when you lay down in the bath that the salt water may completely clear all levels of your aura, your energy body, your physical body, etc. It's an extremely powerful way to reset uh, mind, body, soul. Okay, so I recommend that, but you can also use some other form of total energetic cleansing if something else really resonates with you. The second thing that I recommend doing is reinforcing your auric field with intention. And this can be actually pretty easy. The main way that you want to do this is um, to close your eyes, or if you're just completely masterful, you can do it with your eyes open. I usually close my eyes and I just imagine all around me, maybe say, say 10 feet, or you can even imagine it much larger than that if you really want to benefit not only yourself, but your whole community. You could imagine a mile around you in every direction, but whatever amount feels right to you. You want to imagine like a bright, Bright, bright light and you want to imagine it really strong as so that nothing at all can get in that field you want to admit your core vibration outside of your heart I recommend most of us use our heart but if another chakra feels really strong to you you can imagine the energy emanating out of that chakra I'm gonna use the heart and you just want to imagine the field of energy around you getting so 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 bright and you want to actually imagine it raising the vibration of everything in your vicinity and you just want to imagine it being being um, completely solid you want to imagine your your aura being completely solid so you know that nothing can get in there that doesn't belong and you could imagine like a very powerful beam of light shooting out of your heart chakra and continuously feeding this beautiful aura of energy around you. Do that as many times per day as you need to. Anytime that you start to feel a little weirdness in your field, just just take a couple seconds to just visualize that again, um, and that will help a lot. <laughs> just like, you know, just set the attention, like, I strengthen my aura now. I replenish my aura with a pure vibration of light and love and joy. I fill my aura with the true, with the true vibration of my soul. Nothing can influence my auric field. My auric field is stronger than it has ever been. Those are some good affirmations for you. Now, as we all know, our mind influences our vibration a great deal. The quickest way to lower your vibration and make yourself susceptible to some form of energetic interference is to start feeling fear or to think negatively or to start being angry that is just going to immediately, immediately drop your, your vibration. And so it's extremely important to avoid things that make your thought patterns negative. Um, and it's also important to really, really observe our thoughts. And when you feel your thoughts or you observe them spiraling downward, to adjust them. This is always a good practice, but this is especially essential when we're in times of energetic portals where our thoughts manifest more quickly. Now, my observation is that we are rushing towards a fourth dimensional reality on this planet. The essence of the fourth dimension is that it's about the manifestation of thoughts into reality quicker and quicker and quicker and quicker and quicker. So while a year ago or 10 years ago, maybe you could think a negative thought and you didn't really see any change in your reality very quickly, what you're going to find now is that you think a negative thought and all of a sudden everything around you starts to shift really quickly. So this is, this is a favorable thing in the sense that if we can keep our thoughts positive, we will very quickly manifest a higher form of reality. However, if anyone out there makes our thoughts drop for whatever reason, usually using fear, um, then we will start to manifest things in our society like, um, like warfare 
for example, or other things like that that are violent. And you may have noticed that some of those things are coming closer and closer and closer into a real manifestation in our reality at this time. I would suggest that that is because we are feeding that potentiality with our thoughts. Here's how you can maintain vibrational integrity at the level of the mind. Number one thing, and I'm really serious about this, I know it sounds extreme, but I'm very serious. Do not watch the news, do not listen to the news, do not discuss the news, do not read news articles on Facebook. I would recommend that you don't even go on Facebook. During the eclipse time especially, especially Sunday, Monday, um, I would recommend that you stay away from social media altogether. But you might be thinking, well, Maya, but I have such a great support on social media and there's so many high vibrational articles and sharings and that may be true, but it's very, very difficult to log into social media and to not see the propagation of fear. And unfortunately, I feel that our social media platforms have been sullied by those who wish to influence our mind in one way or another. Let's say you're in a doctor's office or you are, is you're somewhere where the news is playing, an auto repair shop or something like that, I would recommend putting in your headphones. I would recommend not watching it. Actually, don't watch anything. You, you don't watch, listen to, discuss, or read anything that has a vibration lower than your own vibration. Um, so that's my challenge to you. <laughs> Do not watch, listen to, read, or discuss anything whose vibrational frequency is lower than your highest vibration. Okay, I'm gonna give you a minute to digest that. Um, okay, got it? Okay, good, okay. So, <laughs> another way that you can, you can help to maintain mental clarity or vibrational integrity is to meditate or pray or to engage in visualizations that help to uplift you, whatever works for you, but some of those practices can be really helpful. Meditation, especially if you're feeling interference at the level of the mind, which I have observed very substantial interference at the level of the mind um, in the past couple of weeks. Very, very substantial. For example, let's say that you believe in true love and that you normally feel an overwhelming love for your um, twin flame or an overwhelming feeling of upliftment when you think about true soul-based love and then all of a sudden you start to observe thoughts in your mind that question whether true love even exists. Your mind tells you this isn't even real. You know, the soul isn't even real. All of this is lies, right? If you see strange thoughts like that creeping into your mind, I would really question them. And I would suggest that you do something to clear your mind as quickly as possible. And I think meditation is a good way to do that. I also recommend that you watch what you say. So our thoughts manifest very quickly. Our words manifest even more quickly than our thoughts. So <laughs> we don't have control over all the discussions that come up around us, that is true. But I would suggest that you discuss only uplifting topics, especially during this eclipse corridor. We can really spend some time talking to our soul family and friends who understand and just say at the very beginning of the conversation, let's see how high vibe we can make this conversation. And you can make a joke of it or whatever. That will, that will increase your vibration even more if you do joke around with it. It's so easy to fall into a conversation of fear right now. It's so easy. It's so easy, especially considering the global events. Be very careful with what you say with your words. What's popping into my head is the word abracadabra um, and the fact that that means like what we speak um, becomes real or something like that. It's like this idea that our words are magic and our words create and that is very true. So Yes, try to discuss positive things, happy memories from your life, happy visions for the future, jokes, stuff like that. And if there's someone around you who is always negative, who's always saying negative things, unfortunately, um, I would have to advise that you don't speak to that person at all. If they call you, don't answer the phone. If they text you, don't reply. If they email you, block their address. Okay, that's what I do. I know it sounds intense, but if somebody's consistently negative and they always come with a negative vibration, I block their email address because I don't want that vibration near me. I don't feel it's necessary. Okay, I don't know about you guys, but <laughs> I am a researcher. I am a re I really, really am. I loved graduate school. Um, I am a researcher. So sometimes I find myself wanting to research like conspiracy theories and what I'm gonna call like dark matters. Like I, because I just wanna know the truth. I just feel so compelled to know the truth. 
However, what I have observed is that that is one of the quickest ways to, to drop my vibration. So I would recommend that you don't research dark things at this particular moment. It can be tempting. We can really want to know what, what's going on, what's below the surface, and, and we can find ourselves wanting to research those things. Um, that can sometimes uh, manifest them more, though, and so we don't want to do that at this particular time. What I have sort of developed for myself as a way to deal with this is I just ask my guides to bring to me whatever information is essential that I need to know about society and culture to bring it to me directly, like maybe in a dream, maybe in meditation or through some other means so I don't have to, uh, to Google and to research those things. So that is what I would recommend, especially, I actually made a note for myself about keeping my vibration high. One of the things that I wrote is do not look at terrifying images or graphics. Going on Google can be really dangerous because you don't know what you're gonna find like sometimes I'm just researching relatively innocuous things and then all of a sudden I'll see a picture of someone's face and for me I'm very telepathic and when I see a person's face I I can see the world through their eyes and so and then all of a sudden I'll see a person's face somebody who's like a satanic person or something and then all of a sudden like I'm seeing these things that they've seen and it's absolutely awful so so don't uh, don't look at things that are terrifying. Very, very obvious, but I really mean that. Like you may see a flash of the news or something and you may see you know them just playing over and over and over again. Images of violence, images of warfare, images of militants, don't look at it. Okay, you might be thinking, well, my gosh, you know, okay, if I'm not watching the news and I'm not on Facebook and I, I'm not talking to the people that bring negative uh, vibrations, what am I going to be doing? Okay, I recommend two things. One of the things that I recommend is reading books that are uplifting. Um, and I'm going to show you a couple books that I recommend. Um, if you like my channel, you'll probably really like these books. I recommend reading and writing instead of watching TV um, or watching YouTube. Um, I want to make a comment about YouTube in a second. But I recommend being creative, like painting, writing, sketching, singing, humming, toning, dancing, but be careful what music you listen to when you're dancing, but dancing, those are some things that will help to keep your vibration high. So regarding the books, I've got a couple over here. I have the ones that I recommend and then the ones that I'm actually reading right now. So you can go to the library tomorrow or today or whatever and get some books to read to keep you entertained and to fill your mind with truth. That's what we want to go after. So I recommend um, this book above all, all the others if you haven't read it already. Um, this is Journey of Souls by Michael Newton. Um, and when I read this book, it just filled me with so much goodness because I can't say that 100% of all of it is the highest truth, but most of it is. Like most of it resonated as like really deep truth, like more so than any other book I had ever read. And it just filled me with so much goodness. And if you've already read this one, I also recommend the second one, Destiny of Souls. So you could, I bet you, you can find this at the library. Okay, both of these books by Jan Spiller. Uh, this Cosmic Love, I've really talked, I made like 12 videos about this book on my channel, but I also recommend this one, Astrology of the Soul, and I'll tell you what, whenever I get out of alignment, out of vibrational alignment, I like to remind myself of the objectives of my North Node in Astrology, which is what these books are about. As soon as I read the description of North Node in Pisces, which is my North Node, I feel myself coming into alignment with that energy. Very, very powerful. So. I recommend. I'm reading right now is um, this one <laughs> and this one. But I think, you know, just trust yourself and what uplifts you. I like to read things like this and then just ask myself over and over again while I'm reading, like, does this resonate as truth? Does this resonate as truth? And then I like to just ruminate and just on um, the things that do resonate as truth. And just, it really makes me feel good. And it really helps me to stay in vibrational alignment. The other thing that I wanted to say was, okay, do, I, I recommend that you do not watch the recommended videos on YouTube. Um, and particularly that you do not watch the, I don't even know what it's called, but like popular videos of the day, I think, something like that on YouTube, I have found that those greatly influence my brain waves and my mind, and I can't say exactly what lies behind that, but it's a very closely observed phenomenon that I've been observing for a long time, and it even influences my ability to do my readings, so there's really something there. I would especially, especially recommend that you do not watch movie trailers 
um, that you do not watch music videos. Do not watch music videos. There, there's a lot of subliminal messaging in music videos. I know it might sound really extreme, guys, but this is, unfortunately, this is just the reality that we have constructed, the reality that we have all created collectively and that we live in at this present moment. Like I said, you don't want to watch anything unless it is the vibration of your highest vibration or higher. <sighs> Unfortunately, there has been a great deal of electronic interference in the recent weeks and even presently. And that's just too bad. We live in a world right now where there's a lot of electronic vibrations that are that are just pumped out all the time and we can't necessarily always hear these things with our ears or feel them with our body, but they are there. And they can really, really mess with our ability to like hear our spirit guides and to, to have accurate intuition and to feel joy. So minimizing electronic interference. I recommend if you're not using them, especially to unplug your TV, unplug radios, unplug anything that you're not using electronically because all those things do emit electronic waves that impact our aura. This, this is an essential practice in my personal life um, regarding keeping my vibration high, which is removing absolutely all electronics from my bedroom when I sleep. And I don't wanna hear, but Maya, I use my iPhone as an alarm clock. Okay, God bless you. I would recommend instead just using a very, very simple um, alarm clock if you need one. Just a, a $5 alarm clock that you get with a battery. That's going to be a lot healthier for your energetic field. This is really unfortunate, but um, I have observed that when I sleep with like my laptop, let's say I get really tired and I sleep with my laptop or my phone next to me in my bed. I wake up exhausted no matter how long I've slept. I wake up drained, I wake up with a low vibration. And this is the case even if my laptop or my cell phone is powered down. I am very sensitive to vibration. I am able to feel a lot of it. I can't, I don't know if how much of it I'm feeling. You know, there's probably things I'm not, but I feel and hear my computer emitting vibrations when it is powered off. Same thing with my phone. So, just saying. When it becomes the end of the night, I power down my phones, my computer, everything in my room that's electronic, and I get, take it as far away as I can from me, putting it in a bathroom or a closet far away, as far as I can, away from my bedroom. And I also unplug the router when I'm sleeping at night. You know, a router's purpose is to emit vibrations, okay? That's what it does. That's what we buy it for, is to emit the Wi-Fi signal, okay? So we know it's emitting vibrations, and you're not probably using the Wi-Fi in your sleep. If you're not, just unplug it. Okay. When you're sleeping, I highly recommend that you visualize a protective energy field around your bed. And I recommend that you ask your spirit guides or any other available angels or, or high beings of light that you like to work with to maintain that space of um, energetic protection and, uh, while you're sleeping. If you ask your spirit guides or give them permission to cleanse your energy fields, when you're sleeping and to maintain a protective space around your bed that will usually work and you'll usually wake up a lot more rested this is a small one but very powerful that you delete any unneeded files and any unneeded emails from your computer so every document every picture every audio everything on our computer holds an energy that does influence us and if you're a really sensitive empath you'll find that when you put like files in your computer's trash and then you empty the trash that it feels like you just got a powerful healing or clearing so it has a real energetic impact and sometimes there can be there can be strange files on our computer that we didn't necessarily put there that might be that might be operating in the background and influencing our electronics. So, so do that clearing of your computer if you can. I also recommend that, like I said, you don't even log into social media at all. Yep, that's what I would say. Just don't, like, now I'm not saying don't ever log into social media ever again, but I'm saying when the energies are really high, like during an eclipse portal or something like that, just don't do it. Unless every time you log into social media, you truly feel a lift in your vibration, then I would recommend that you, you don't log in. Most of us feel a heaviness. We feel worse after looking at our social media. I would suggest that that's for a reason. And the reason is because the social media is having an electronic 
interference moment with our auric field. So the first thing on my list is to bless your food and water before you consume it. This actually makes a really big difference, like a really big difference. Sometimes I forget to do it and then when I start again, it's like, whoa, like, okay, I feel great. I usually just take my right hand, this is the one for, for giving energy, and I just imagine like a white, this is my water, this is my lemon water, I just imagine like a light beam of love and joy just going into my water like this and just set the intention. Usually I set the intention that like this water may be filled with the highest frequency available to me at this time and that drinking it may help me to come into greater alignment with my higher self and to fulfill my divine life's purpose on this planet. Like something like that, whatever works for you. It's the intention that matters. And then I drink it and it like works. And I do the same thing, I do the same thing with food. Okay, so bless your food and water before you consume it. The thing that I recommend for minimizing physical interference is actually listening to, listening to positive frequencies and then feeling those frequencies in your body. I am going to post one that I like in the description below. I'm also going to link in the description below a documentary about our frequencies. So anybody that's interested in this topic and wants to watch something on YouTube that has a vibration that's as high as their highest vibration or higher this weekend, then I recommend that you watch that documentary and it will help you to learn more ways that you can avoid energetic interference. I also recommend that we connect with nature Earthing, which is taking your shoes off and walking on the earth and imagining your energy flowing through your feet, anything you don't need flowing through your feet and into the earth. Um, another good thing if you're kind of tired and you don't want to walk around is just sitting on the earth too and that will connect your root chakra with the earth. So be very gentle with your body. Sleep as much as you need. Even if you can't sleep, just laying down and resting is also very good for your body. I also recommend taking some form of calming herb. I mean, this is a very stressful time on the planet and we may need some support at the level of the cells for our body. Some that I recommend um, include ashwagandha. I made a video about my love for ashwagandha. So if that feels resonant to you, I recommend ashwagandha for lowering stress levels in your body. Another good one is magnesium. Look up the signs of being magnesium deficient. And if you think you're magnesium deficient or that resonates for you, magnesium will help to calm your body as well. Um, and I also recommend lemon balm. That's what I'm using right now. I'm taking a break from ashwagandha, but I'm taking lemon balm. Um, that also is a relaxation herb. Any other herb that, that helps you to feel relaxed and keep your vibration high is great for you. I mean, all of our bodies are different, but don't be afraid to to supplement your diet or with these calming herbs. Now, I do need to say, I guess, check with your doctor first. Okay, and watch what you consume. Yes, watch what you consume and put into your body during these times. Eat in abundance, eat food in abundance, eat pure whole foods in abundance um, to, to help give your body the energy that it needs. But I would very strongly advise not drinking alcohol. Um, I do think that keeps, that makes us really susceptible to very severe energetic interference. So during these very important times of change on the planet, I would recommend that you, you definitely don't drink alcohol or take any sort of drugs that could leave you very open to energetic interference. I also recommend that we minimize uh, sugar consumption, especially like white processed sugar, as that seems to have a strong impact on our consciousness. Minimize the consumption of of strange chemicals because those do have an influence on our consciousness and on our vibration unfortunately it is really unfortunate that we live in a society where perhaps food companies knowingly put things in our food that limit our ability to awaken to our true nature that is very unfortunate but just be very mindful of what you're putting in your body at this time also, exercise. When we exercise, our body is able to cleanse the cells. And when we breathe out, when we're exercising, we breathe out toxins, we sweat out toxins. So I wouldn't necessarily say to push yourself too hard because a lot of our bodies are strained right now with the upgrades. Um, but even just a nice sort of vigorous walk or even a calm walk or whatever exercise feels good to you, exercise can be a way to help keep your vibration high. And it also releases endorphins that help us to feel good. 
our emotions are very, 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 very powerful. So we really want to be aware of what emotions that we're feeling. I'm not saying that you have to feel joy and bliss all the time, but what I am saying is we should be observant of our emotional states and we should really ask, okay, where did this emotion come from? Whenever we're feeling something, especially if you're feeling low, you want to really ask yourself, is this mine? Where, where, where did this emotion come from? Is this mine? Is this necessary? Sometimes it is. Sometimes we're healing and clearing and we need to cry and we need to release and we need to let ourselves feel. But sometimes we have kind of woo-woo emotions like that seem to come out of nowhere, you know, or they seem to come from seeing t terrible things on the news, right? And then it's like, oh, I feel so down. I'm losing my faith in humanity. So you want to just ask yourself over and over and over again. This is sort of the empath mantra. Is this mine? Is this mine? Do I need to carry this emotion? Do I need to hold this emotion? Release anything that it doesn't belong to you, okay? Release anything that doesn't belong to you. Imagine the actual energy flowing down through your body, out through your feet, and into the earth. Also, I recommend again, staying away from negative people. The negative people are going to be very lonely <laughs> for the next week. Gonna just stay away from the negative people. This probably isn't going to make a lot of people happy, but I am taking off the next week from email and from doing readings because I just have a feeling that a lot of people are going to be in a negative vibration and they're going to be emailing me. And I want to be, I want to fulfill my light worker mission at this time, which means holding the highest vibration on the planet during this shift. And so I'm going to stay away from the negative people, okay? And what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to be making videos this whole time to offer you all energetic support as we move through this eclipse corridor. So that's what I'm going to be doing instead of email and readings. And my final little tip for us here with maintaining emotional uh, vibrational integrity is challenge ourselves to, to laugh because that is a very powerful form of healing and transmutation of energies. And some of this stuff is so crazy that's happening right now in our lives. I mean, it's just it's just out of control. It really is funny, especially if you think about it from the level of the soul. So I recommend that you do that and that you challenge yourself to laugh and that, you know, that all of us set the intention to maintain our highest soul vibration at this time so that we really can do what we came here to do, which is to be keepers of this light and keepers of the vibrational truth of who we really are and to help ensure that this planet's highest future is realized. So that's it, guys. Hopefully you liked this video. Um, and hopefully you enjoyed it. Like I said, I'm going to be putting some helpful links in the description below. So check that out. And thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Thank you so much for watching. And thank you for your intentions to maintain a high vibration. And thank you for caring. And thank you for being open to to some of these ideas that might seem a little extreme at first. And thank you for doing the best you can to make whatever changes that you can make to minimize the energetic interference that could be taking place in your world at this time. And yes, just know that you're doing a good job and you're doing the best you can and that you can move through this eclipse corridor while maintaining vibrational integrity and being in alignment with your soul. And I am going to be holding space for that reality for everyone. So thank you again for watching and namaste.